that's the most important priority in a family. It's walking with the Lord. Making decisions that would please God. Making a spiritual investment in the children. And dads, it's your responsibility, my responsibility as a father, to take the initiative to make those priorities. I heard somebody say that for good things to happen, you've got to plan. Bad stuff will happen all by itself. Isn't that true? If you want to see generational godliness, dad, you're going to have to take the initiative. Take the initiative in your family for the things and ways of God. I wonder how different families would be if fathers on Saturday nights would, after supper, tell, tell the family, hey, be getting your clothes out, be getting your clothes ready. We're going to corporate worship in the morning. You're under my roof. I'm the father, and we're going to be in the Lord's house. We're going to be in corporate worship. But a lot more families would be in corporate worship, wouldn't they? I wonder how different things would be on Wednesday nights when Dad got off of work. If he told the family, all right, we're going to go to midweek service. I'm taking us. We're going to go. I wonder how different things would be if on a weeknight, after the meal was over, after dinner was over, if Dad told, told Mama and the children, y'all go get your Bibles and come back to the dinner table. We're going to read a chapter out of the Word of God and talk about it for a moment, and then we're going to pray together. I believe that the impact would be staggering, dramatic, in the change that we would see in the family, in the church, in the community, in the nation. If Dad would take the initiative and prioritize godliness. I got one more point, one more point, and then we're going to close today. The fourth challenge that I want you to see is the challenge of persistent godliness. Persistent godliness. Look at verse 4 again. Paul says, And your fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. He speaks to, to fathers and to parents negatively about something that they should not do, and then positively about something that they should do. First of all, he says, Parents, you don't need to provoke your children to wrath. You know what he's saying here? You need to mold their spirits for Christ, not break them. As parents, especially men, we can be very harsh, can't we, on our children. We can berate our children. We can be tough, 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 tougher than we should be. We can do it to the point that we get into legalism and turn them totally off for the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? I've never seen a person run to the Lord Jesus by another person beating them for Christ. I've never seen a person run to the Lord Jesus by getting a tongue lashing for Jesus. I've never seen that of you. I have seen people turned off from the gospel by be people being too harsh, too legalistic over things that ultimately are not that important. That's what Paul is talking about. Don't break your child's spirit. Mold it. It says if you don't, you will provoke them to wrath. That word wrath right there, it's the idea of going up to some embers in a fire. You see a campfire and take it in your poker and just stirring it up so those coals and those embers become flames. He says don't do that. Don't do that. That's what he says negatively. But then he tells us two things that we need to do positively. Two things that parents need to do on a persistent, continual basis. And the first is this. As a parent in the home, in the context of the family, you need to offer loving correction to your child. Loving correction to your child. Paul says there in Ephesians 6, verse 4, he says, bring them up in the nurture, the nurture of the Lord. That word nurture is very interesting. This Greek word is translated in other places as chasten. We see it in Hebrews 12, verse 6. Speaking about the Lord, our Heavenly Father, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. A part of discipleship for your children and grandchildren is to correct them in love when they go astray, when they do wrong.
You show grace, you show compassion, you show mercy unto them, but all those things are tempered by a loving correction. That's what we're supposed to do, offer loving correction. But then second, what are we to do on a persistent, continual basis from the Word of God? Not only loving correction, but then positive instruction. Positive instruction. He says, secondly, there you bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. That word admonition, it's got a lot of different uses in the Greek. It could refer to what would go on at a gymnasium when you would exercise and discipline yourself. Paul is taking that and applying it to the, what, in the context of what parents do to their children. You are to show them the things of God from the Word of God. You are to instruct them in a positive way as to what God requires. And you to do that on a persistent, continual basis. Not just one time, not just two times, but over and over and over again. You know, I, I've been out of the home. I've been out of my parents' house since I was 17, and I call my parents every Sunday in between church services when the, my kids are down for a nap, and there's probably not a Sunday that goes by, especially if I talk to my mother, that she's not going to remind me of something that I need to be doing in terms of godliness. <laughs> I'm not joking, Miss Joe. I'm being serious. It doesn't end, does it? Love and correction. Positive instruction. Now, Brother Marcus, will you pull that picture back up? I want us to end like we started. And I want to end with this question. Are you thinking about your family like that? Generationally. Are you thinking about your future like that? Maybe today the Spirit of God is convicting you. And you're saying, I'm not making an investment, a spiritual investment in my children. I'm not making a spiritual investment in my grandchildren. I'm failing there, and it's going to affect my family long term. Maybe the Spirit of God has convicted you over that. If so, I want to tell you two things. I'm going to close. First, the answer to that is repentance. If the Spirit of God is convicting you, that is sin, and it requires repentance. That's the hard part. But I want to tell you something else, too, encouraging. If the Spirit of God is convicting you over that, that you're not thinking long-term, that you're not thinking generationally about your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, there is still time. It's not over with. There's still time. You're still alive, aren't you? I hadn't, my preacher's not that bad, is he? You're still alive, aren't you? There's still time. You can change. You can think about your family differently. You can invest in your family in a different way. But it needs to start today. There is still time. Well, right now, we're going to have a time of decision. If the Spirit of God's convicting you over this, and you want to come and talk to the Lord, you want to come and pray for your family, then I ask you to come at this time. Brother T.